I really do apologize for the mess in here. You know, I typically like to keep my garage clean, but when I make videos, I get a little bit lazy and I say whatever, and I just end up shooting it when my garage is at its worst. But you can see I really got to clean it up in here. I was supposed to be at work today, but uh, I got my new phone coming, so I have to stay at the house all day to wait for it. So in the meantime, let's get some work done here at home. Take me away from home. Show me all the places I've never known. I will chase the night. Race all of these broken dreams and flight. What's up guys? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Today we're going to talk about a way to make your weed control work better. You see, there's a lot of situations where you apply weed control and then you're about a week or two after you've applied and you see little to no results. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as well. Of course, before we do anything, I really got to get my lawn to cut. It's been about 11 days now since my last mow and man, she's been growing like crazy. By the way, can you see this, uh, this little brown spot right here in the lawn? I don't know if you could really tell here on the camera. A lot of the dormant spots are gone, mainly because we've been getting a little bit more rain too, which is always good. Nothing beats a good rain. Color's looking good, but then all of a sudden you move to this spot down here. You can really see the big difference in color. We'll come back to this later, but in the meantime, let's get her cut. So I'm over here just mowing, right? It's doing the same thing it did a month ago. What it was is it wasn't getting any fuel. Let me blow out all the lines and stuff, and it was working fine. Here we are a month later, and I feel like I'm having the same issue, but I can't really see anything. I mean, it looks like it's getting fuel. The fuel filter's full. And I don't know what's wrong now. It's just after a few minutes, it's starting to go out like it did about a month ago. It's just it's killing me. You guys may remember the video I did last month showing you guys how to properly spray and kill weeds. All this video is just an extra step that you can go to help improve the targeting aspect when it comes to spraying weeds. And the way to do it is to add a surfactant. A surfactant is a chemical that breaks down the surface tension in water and allows the weed control to evenly coat and stick better on top of the weed. You guys know that the typical over-the-counter stuff you're going to get at the store is going to work really well but sometimes you're not always going to get the best of coverage with the weed control alone. When you spray, the liquid weed control is going to settle on top of the weed and it's going to be beaded up on top. And if you don't know what that's called, that's called surface tension. What can happen is over time after you spray, 
it can eventually roll off the weed and it won't stay on there long enough to absorb. Or it can be another scenario where it just stays on top of the weed but it doesn't kill the weed completely, it only kills patches of it. And it's not the best thing either when you have these strong waxy leaf materials on the weeds themselves that act as barriers that can fight against your weed control, especially when your weed control is not able to stick to the weed and it eventually just rolls off or doesn't take. Another reason a surfactant is so important is because it can save you money. Because like I was saying earlier, how the weed control can just roll off the weed and it doesn't give you any results, that means you're going to have to go to the store again and spend more money on more weed control to go ahead and apply again. And what that means is you've got to put down more weed control than you initially planned and you also got to spend more money than you initially planned. By Using a surfactant, you're going to allow the weed control to stick to the weed better and also leave a more even coating on top of the weed so it kills the first time you spray, and then that way you don't have to spend more money and reapply. Hey, Nipper, want to come out, baby girl? Come here. Come here. I know you, I know you want to come out. Come on. Come on. That a girl. She needs some fresh air, and man, do I need to clean out this garage. Jeez. Now, you don't always have to go get a hefty designer product just to complete this simple of a task. You can go right to Walmart and pick up a batch of dish soap. You see, dish soap can be used as a surfactant also, because if you look at the texture it has, even when you pour it on a dish and you're about to scrub it, you can tell it has a pretty sticky texture to it to help get all the junk off of your plates from dinner. And judging by the sticky texture that this has, I presume that it'll be able to even out the spray pattern on top of the weed and at the same time allow the weed control to stick better. So with all that being said, let me show you how to mix it. So now I'm at the point where I've already mixed the weed control. I filled it up to three quarter. So we're going to continue to fill the rest of the way. But first, we're going to put in our surfactant. So what you're going to do is you're going to put an ounce of dish soap per gallon of mixed weed control. In this case, we've got one gallon. So it's pretty simple. So we just do one ounce. We have to keep the hose above and out of the mixture. We don't want this touching the mixture, and at the same time, we don't want the mixture to foam and bubble up, otherwise you're not going to get the desired effect you want out of it. We're going to go ahead and fill this batch up to one gallon, because that's the recommended dosage per gallon, so we got to get, get it all filled up to a gallon. Unkink your hose very carefully, right? Rinse any remaining surfactant that didn't go in there yet. And remember, we're going to fill this very slow here, so it doesn't bubble up. All right, now we're going to go ahead and stir it up and make sure it's properly agitated. I got a piece of wood right here, probably not the best practice, but it's the best I have available to me right now. So, got to do what you got to do, right? Here's another weed I'm seeing a lot of over here. It's this stuff right here. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of it. See it? It kind of grows in a viney form. Just a quick tip over here. If you have areas where you typically weed whack and you have weeds popping up here along the edges, don't weed whack this, otherwise it's not gonna work when you spray.
Remember this spot right here from earlier in the video I was talking about? You can kind of see the color differentiation from the rest of the lawn. You can see it's looking good, but then we come down here and you have this brown patch. What I think it is is lack of water because when we were in the drought for a little bit, I was watering, but I was mainly watering up here, over here, and over here, and hopefully the stream would reach over here but because of the wind we were having it always blew it that way and every time I put it over here I just didn't really get a lot of luck so I decided okay maybe I can reach it from a far distance and you could see my irrigation practices didn't help me out because of the wind what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and water three times a week 45 minutes each time to make sure I'm getting a half inch each water and we'll see what happens in a few days We're over a week after application and you can see we got some good results here. We had some oxalis, as you guys remember. This is where it was really bad. It was flowering and everything right here. After our weed control mix, you can see completely sourced. We still have a little bit in there, but we did get a majority of it. And you could see this is why we say use a surfactant because it helps the weed control work longer, stronger, and faster, and it also creates a more consistent coating on top of the weed which allows you to kill the whole weed completely. We get the same results here on the broadleaf weeds, here are the dandelions. A little bit slower here with the dandelions, but you can see the same idea. We want the surfactant so it can stick to the weeds long enough to absorb. As well as you guys remember this spot right here, I went ahead and weed whacked it this week so it was just completely done and over with. But I had some uh, broad leaves poking up here through the edges and you could see after my weed mix from a week ago, much better. We got a little bit of dead leaf down there, but much better targeting overall. It's this stuff right here. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of it. See it? It kind of grows in a viney form. Good coverage all around. When I come over here to where the clover was, I see almost little to no results. We got a little bit of wilting going on right there. It's good. We got rid of the most of the flowers here. That's pretty good, but some of the leaf material here remains. You gotta remember, clover is a pretty tough plant. The only way to really kill clover with your standard weed control, with or without a surfactant, is you have to go to extreme measures to do it. Because I know I go down the street, right, I have a customer, 
he actually recently had weed control applied to his lawn and he must have had a double lap or something because the areas where clover was those areas are now brown they just got a little bit of a herbicide burn to them due to the fact that he had to apply about maybe twice or three times the amount of herbicide in order to knock these guys out of the race completely but for me since i only sprayed them once that tells me that with clover it's not really going to be enough i know that because this spot right here actually used to be littered with just tons and tons of clover these are some escapees and we're going to have to take care of these with a herbicide And really, if you just dig in here, though, and look at this, look. Just take a look. I mean, there's a, probably a little bit of grass under here, but not a lot. You can kind of see what I'm seeing, saying here. Like, I just pull it up. It's like, boom. There's, like, no, no survivor in grass under here. So I bet when we kill this, we're going to have a little bit to contend with. But you know what? That's okay. We're going to use good fertilizer and good mowing, and this should thicken up just fine. That's why this area looks a little bit different compared to the rest of the lawn. You can see it's a little bit thin over here. That's because all that used to be over here was clover, and it was just choking out a lot of the good grass. But now that we were able to back it down, it's gone. And it didn't take me just one app to do that. I had to do two apps in one day. I did one without a surfactant and one with a surfactant and you could see that was just enough to completely knock it out of the race. That doesn't tell me that using a surfactant on clover isn't going to work. It just tells me that if you're going to try to eliminate tough weeds such as clover, you need to make sure you go to the extreme with it. But you don't want to go too far with it, otherwise you're going to damage your grass plant. Now me, I'm not really going to do that because I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. I want to keep this lawn as organic and chemical free as possible. And you can see it's really paying off and I don't want to do anything else to ruin that. I also came over here and told you guys about a spot I had in the lawn. My belief was that it was from lack of water. Let's take a look at what it looks like from a couple of rains and over a week and a half of watering. Here it is today, July 26, 2017, and it is looking much better. Again, it wasn't just this spot down here. It really came all the way down here. And from proper irrigation practices, you could see... It's coming back. Now we have a little bit of breakthrough over there we have to work on, but other than that, much better. At the beginning of this video, I'm pretty sure you guys remember me mentioning that I have had a couple issues here with the tractor when I was about to give the lawn its next mow with the stripes and everything. But anyway, I buckled down, did a little bit of troubleshooting, and I got to the bottom of the problem, and it turns out all I needed was a new air filter. She works like new again. You see, the problem with this old air filter is there's a little bit of debris that got in here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's mainly a little bit of grass clippings. I found a couple uh, little bugs in here, and really, if you just look at it, it's pretty dirty. But that just tells you, when in doubt and your mower's starting to rev down a little bit, it sounds like it's going to die on you, check the fuel filter. You may need a new one. That probably could have came from my gas cans because I don't properly, I haven't been properly sealing them. I just let them sit in the garage and maybe debris gets stirred up from the wind and they end up just going into the cans. And also having a lawn service, you tend to get a lot of debris that just happens to sneak into your gas cans. And what I'm going to do from this point forward is I'm going to buy caps for my gas cans to keep all the debris out of there. I'm going to blow them out, clean them out. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to start using a nylon here on the gas tank for the mower anytime I refill it to make sure that I don't pull any loose debris that may have stayed in the gas cans and keep it out of the system. I don't want to get caught in the filter or even worse going back into the carburetor and having to clean it. 